Hi guys, Michael Abaimi here, and today I'll be unboxing the new Infinix 55 inch Smart TV. I'll also be giving some first impressions on the quality of its 4K display, as well as its overall gaming performance. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then show some love by liking the video and subscribing to the channel for even more awesome content in the future. And be sure to stick around to the very end of the video for information about pricing and availability. With both the PS5 and Xbox Series X slowly finding their ways into more and more homes, many gamers are also finding the display that will be able to take advantage of their high-end bells and whistles. In particular, the ability to run games at up to 8K resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. The reality though, is that most games will not be able to hit 8K or 120Hz while maintaining decent enough frame rates, at least going by the settings for the current crop of available titles for both consoles. So we can expect games running at 4K60 to remain the standard for the foreseeable future, but with a higher graphical fidelity than last-gen consoles could allow. And that's where a TV like the Infinix 55S1 comes in, a budget-friendly 4K display that lacks the ability to support high-end frame rates, but still offers a very decent performance for games running at 4K60. The Infinix 55-inch Smart TV boasts 1.5GB of RAM and 80GB of onboard storage, which you'll need to install popular smart TV apps like YouTube or Netflix. It runs on what appears to be Android 6.0, but there's always the option to update the pre-installed software through firmware updates. In terms of available ports, Infinix isn't exactly skin out as their TV gives you a number of options for hooking up to external devices and signals. These include 3 HDMI ports, 2 USB ports, 2 antenna ports, 1 AV port, 1 coaxial cable port, and 1 Ethernet port for high-speed internet. The TV comes packed with everything you need to get it up and running. These include the TV remotes, the power cable, the stands with leg screws, instruction manuals, and a pair of AAA batteries for the included remotes. The remote is quite small and minimalistic, although the buttons felt and sounded a bit too clicky for my liking. Thankfully, you also have the option to control the TV with your smartphone. My unit also came with a gift box that contained an umbrella and a water bottle, so hooray for freebies. The first thing you want to do, of course, is read through the included instruction manual, which details how to attach the TV to its stand, amongst other things. Once that is done, you can proceed with booting it up. The initial boot up took nearly a minute, so some patience is required as you wait to complete the setup process. Next, you'll be asked to select your preferred language of choice, as well as an available Wi-Fi network if you wish to access content online. Once all that is done, then the TV is all set up and ready for use. Hitting the home button on the remote takes you to the main menu, where you can find all the available smart TV apps and content. And the first thing that struck me was just how poorly optimized for 4K these menus seem to be. There were pixelated images everywhere I looked, as I went about installing the YouTube and Netflix apps. The interface itself wasn't super responsive as I navigated with the remote control, but what I would call usable overall. It is worth noting though, that the Netflix app doesn't seem to work with the included remote at all, and I had to resort to using my phone as an air mouse to circumvent this, which was just about as clunky as it sounds. And this is how I would describe the user experience as a whole. Clunky. But it is safe to assume that you are most likely more interested in how the TV looks, while streaming videos and the like, than how crisp the menus are. And for the most part, it does just as well as you'd expect. Content streamed at 1080p looks decent enough, but the TV truly shines once you feed it with some appropriate 4K content. Here the images really pop, and coupled with the thin bezels around its display, the viewing experience can even be called immersive. The included 10 watt speakers also sounded fine for the most part, although you might need to really crank up the volume during movies with lots of soft spoken dialogue. The TV also gives you the option to stream content directly from your phone with the Infinix Live app, either through a mobile hotspot or over the same Wi Fi connection. But I found this to be somewhat slower than I would call ideal, although I think that might have more to do with the quality of my Wi Fi signal than anything else. A Crips 4K video of some animals in the wild is all well and good. But how exactly does the TV perform while displaying some next-gen graphics? Well, unfortunately, I am yet to cop either of the two next-gen consoles from Microsoft or Sony due to their current jacked-up prices. But I was able to test how the TV functions at 4K by hooking it up to my mid-range gaming laptop, where I played some Doom Eternal in glorious 4K. My camera doesn't exactly do it any justice, but the image did look satisfyingly crisp and fluid. I also tested how the TV performs with a 1080p signal from my Nintendo Switch, and I was pleased with the overall results. Keep in mind that the Switch isn't exactly known for its graphical prowess, with its games tending to lack basic features like adequate anti-aliasing. But sitting at a respectable distance from the TV, you'll be hard pressed to notice any of the jagged edges. Overall, the Infinix 55-inch Smart TV offers a decent number of features for its price points. As at the time of this review, 
Prices for the TV vary wildly at the various online retailers, but I was able to cop this particular unit for just under 200,000 naira, which is roughly around $500. It definitely feels like a budget TV, but can look great provided you provide it with signals that play well with its strengths, namely its beautiful 4K panel. The clunky design of its user interface can also be ignored for the most part, especially if you'll be feeding most of your content through an external source like a 4K enabled setup box or game console. And with that, we've arrived at the end of this video. If you found this review helpful, then be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until the next one, this is Michael, signing off.